Ambassadors from Harry, King of England, do crave admittance to your majesty. Go and bring them. You see, this chase is hotly followed, friends. Good, my sovereign. Take up the English sword and let them know of what a monarchy you are the head. Self-love, my liege, is not so vile a sin as self-neglecting. From our brother, England, from him, and thus he greets your majesty. He wills you, in the name of God Almighty, that you divest yourself and lay apart the borrowed glories that by gift of heaven, by law of nature and of nations, longs to him and to his heirs, namely, the crown. Willing you overlook this pedigree and when you find him evenly derived from his most famed of famous ancestors, Edward III, he bids you then resign your crown and kingdom, indirectly held from him, the native and true challenger. Or else, what follows? Bloody constraint. For if you hide the crown, even in your hearts, there will he rake for it. Therefore, in fierce tempest is he coming, in thunder and in earthquake, like a Jove, that if requiring fail, he will compel. This is his claim, his threatening, and my message. Unless the dolphin be in presence here, to whom expressly I bring greeting too. For the Dauphin, I stand here for him. What to him from England? Scorn and defiance, slight regard, contempt, and anything that might not misbecome the mighty sender doth he prize you at. Thus says my king. Say, if my father render fair return, it is against my will, for I desire nothing but odds with England. And to that end, as matching to his youth and vanity, I did present him with the Paris balls. You make your Paris Louvre shake for it. And be assured, you'll find a difference, as we his subjects have in wonder found between the promise of his greener days and these he masters now. Tomorrow shall you know our mind at full.